Howdy, folks. I play a song on my tenor guitar. Tenor's got four strings. My new favorite thing. And Nico Case plays one. That's very sexy. Alright. This is an old song. My grandpa taught it to me. It's the first song I ever learned. I think it's from the teens or around the turn of the century or something. But uh, it's called The Strawberry Roan. It's about a bucking horse. Well, I was hanging around town, just spending my time out of a job, not earning the dime. Fellow steps up and he says, I suppose you're a wrong rider from the looks of your clothes. He figures me right, and I'm a good one, I claim. Do you happen to have any bad ones to take? Said he's got one bad one to buck. Throwing good riders, he's had a lot of luck. Well, I get all excited and I ask what he'd pay to ride the old mag for a couple of days. He offers me ten and I says I'm your man. The Bronx never lived that I couldn't fan. He says, get your saddle and I'll give you a chance. So we hopped in his buckboard and we drove to the ranch. Stayed at ten morning right after church. I stepped out to see if this outlaw could put. Down in the horse corral standing. His legs were all stabbed he's got pigeon toes Little pig eyes and a big Roman nose Little pin ears, a touch at the tip Big 44 brand was on his left hip He's unique to nose with a long lower jaw I can see with one eye he's a regular outlaw goes on from there. Um, it's interesting because some of the words in that one are a little bit different than the Marty Robbins version or a couple other versions I've heard because it was so old that it was before the mass media so guys would just learn them from each other and they would pass them around and they would change as they you know moved around geographically and some of the locations would change in the songs and sometimes some of the technical terminology would change depending on well, who was singing them? So anyway, it's interesting. That's my grandpa's version anyway. Uh, I can tell you about my dad this episode. Um, they just inducted him into the uh, Canadian Rodeo Cowboy Hall of Fame. They gave him a buckle at the Tabor Rodeo this last weekend, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, his name's DC Lund. He's my dad, and he's rodeo cowboy and, and grew up ranching, and he's a country veterinarian, horse doctor, you know. And uh, also a watercolorist, does western landscapes and stuff. Um, yeah, the, he's done some interesting stuff. He and Mum went to Zambia, Africa in 1973 or 74 to put a rodeo on there, which is bizarre, but cool. <laughs> they're having, I guess they were having the, a party for the 10-year anniversary of their independence. So they called the Canadian government saying they wanted a Wild West show. Or something. So they sent the sent word to the rodeo association and. I guess the story I heard from Dad is that they put the word out, and he didn't hear about it for months. And then it was getting right down to the deadline. He heard about it on a Thursday, and I guess by a Tuesday, him and Mom were on the plane to Zambia, with uh, along with Tommy Buse and his wife Rosemary, and another cowboy named Gordon Kessler from Alberta. So they were there for a month, uh, training the locals and putting the stock together and the arena and stuff. And then they they uh, spent three weeks preparing and then did a week's worth of shows. Um, I guess I guess the local Black African mounted police were ordered to become bronc riders, <laughs> whether they liked it or not. So we've got this really great footage, super hit footage of the African guys learning to ride broncs and wrestle steers and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and uh, I get one of the funny funny stories about it was um, the Canadian guys are chewing Copenhagen, you know, chewing tobacco out of the tin, and. Uh, 
doing all this stuff with animals that the local guys couldn't get their heads around, you know, riding bucking horses and roping and all that stuff. And they were convinced that this this uh, brown powder had something to do with it, <laughs> some kind of magic magic cowboy mojo going on or whatever. That's pretty funny. Copenhagen should get a hold of that. <laughs> and uh, another funny story kind of is that he dad said that throughout the week of performances, the crowd was pretty into it and they liked it. The bronc rides and then applaud for the steer wrestlers and all that stuff. But the thing that got the most applause all, all, all week, I guess, was um, Dad's hat blew off or something, and he uh, rode over and scooped it up without getting off off his horse, and the crowd went nuts. <laughs> that was the thing that they liked the most. So he did it every show after that. <laughs> Funny. Um, what else? Yeah, he's a. You should check out his artwork. I I don't know exactly. I should know this, but I don't. He's somewhere, you can find him on the net, DC Lund, but um, he's a watercolor. So he got me into it when I was young, too. I'll show you a couple more pieces here. I retired kind of early because I don't have any time for it, but it's my horse rooster. Little sketch. And uh, what else we got here? It's a prairie landscape. This is, this is my favorite. I did this one when I was quite young, it's a buffalo skull. And the paint is actually made out of a reduction of walnuts. Mm. Cool, irrelevant. Um, what else? Uh, oh yeah, da uh, your dad and mom went to Australia in the 70s, and, or 60s, late 60s for a, a season, about six months, and, and competed there in the Australian circuit. I guess I guess the calf roping was just coming in there because like Aussies don't have uh, they don't traditionally rope in their culture they don't have horns on their saddles um, and as a, as a, as an event, sporting event it started to catch on in the 60s I guess and Dad says that I, he told me that he won the national championship which is kind of funny because he's not really a roper <laughs> I mean sort of but you know, he was always mostly a steer wrestler and a bronc rider but um, I guess all the Aussies would gather around and watch watch him tie the calf every time he'd rope one because it was a new thing but uh... that's pretty cool what else oh, he, he, um, in the later part of his veterinarian career he started getting into meat inspection and he um... started going up to the arctic to oversee the muskox harvest then Inuit kill the muskox so the, the surplus muskox on Banks Island and they send it to Japan I think they have a market for it but they have to have a vet there to make sure that and the standards are being kept up and stuff. So he did he did that for a number of years, and ended up writing some papers, uh, academic papers on stress levels in captive muskox and ungulates, Arctic ungulates and stuff. Ended up going to some conferences, um, I think in Norway and Denmark about Arctic uh, ungulates, deer, and muskox and stuff. It's pretty interesting. But yeah, Dad was he always um even when I was in the rock band, which he completely didn't get. He, he and Mom were always really supportive of it. And I think because he was an artist he sort of got the whole got the whole impetus for wanting to play music and stuff. But um he's pretty open open minded. He he gave me a lot of uh he's not your typical redneck cowboy. He's he's pretty open minded and well read and well traveled and um learned a lot of stuff from him. Uh he's a voracious reader. He got me into books when I was really young too. Um Anyway, that's a random smattering of shit that my dad does. Uh, maybe I'll talk about my mom next week. She's pretty interesting, too. All right. Playing late-night crazy pop-size games at the age 